I wanted to do a quick video to highlight some of the areas in the LIRA starter pack that were giving me some problems. I figured if I capture them here, other folks can benefit from them. Uh, so the first thing is, if you've seen any of the videos around dealing with uh, adjusting weapons and placing the weapons in the right hand, you'll know that you basically go to the idle hip fire animation and either use the control rig or keyframe the fingers uh, to have the fingers wrap around the weapon appropriately. So what I've discovered is the easiest way to do some of these things is I go to the weapon uh, attach point and add a preview socket. And then I set that preview socket to the same values that the weapon ID has. So the weapon ID says it's going to attach to weapon R and it's going to offset by 14, 0, 10, and minus 90. So what I do is I create a socket just for preview only. I set its values to be the same, and therefore when I attach the weapon asset to it, it lines it up uh, appropriately with the right hand. Now the left hand you typically do by keyframing the various bones that are in the mask. And if you don't know which bones are in the mask, um, you can go to the skeleton and over here do the blend profiles and look at the left finger mask. Oh, it looks like my game just expired. The left finger mask will tell you which bones are part of that mask. So the IK hand left is part of the mask and basically all the bones in the in the hand is part of that mask. So any of those bones you can adjust in your idle hip fire and it'll adjust appropriately. However, once you've done that and you've keyed these as you have already done and you have your fingers in the position you want, you'll find that when you go into your game, maybe restart that. When you go into your game and you go pick up your weapon, and then take it and take a look. You note that the hand is not in the position that you want. It's actually uh, basically using the left hand IK to move the hand position up onto where the rifle uh, is positioned. And you can see in these, these are just my debuggers are showing where that uh, bone is positioned. So that's the problem we're going to talk about how to have the wrist not snap here but to have the wrist snap uh, on the position of the handle where we want it to. So the first thing to do is, like I said, you're going to build this appropriately to the way you want it. And then what I've noticed is that in the um, item anim layer under the full body skeletal controls, ignore this, this is the fix, you'll see that what it's doing is it's picking up the virtual bone for the for the hand L and copying that into the IK hand position. So this is basically overriding anything you do in the IK hand position with this virtual bone. And then from there, it's basically doing a little modification and it's running the IKs to position the hand. So the driver is really this virtual bone IK hand L weapon space. And if you look at the skeleton, you'll notice that that virtual bone is associated with the white, the weapon right. So it's not actually attached to the hand L, it's attached to the weapon right. And that's kind of shows you the offset between the weapon and the virtual bone. So I had to come up with a way to actually move this bone into this virtual bone into the proper position. So I ended up doing it in two different ways. So the first part of that step was I decided that on my weapon, I would add a socket. So for each weapon, um, I've placed a socket. The socket basically dictates where the hand uh, is going to uh, place itself as well as its rotation. In order to get that in the main blueprint, the mannequin base blueprint, I did have to run one function on the game thread. Um, I couldn't actually figure out how to get the pawn and, and update this. So what I ended up doing was I created a small function that's running on the game thread. It's taking the pawn. It's basically getting the weapon 
out of a, a macro that they've already built for you. Then I'm grabbing the skeletal mesh out of that macro and picking up my socket, which is this left-handed socket name, in world space, loading that into a uh, location and a rotation. And then I'm just drawing some debug information. So that's all I had to do in the mannequin base. Then in the anim uh, for the item layer, what I ended up doing was inserting these two nodes in between. So we go past the IK targeting. We then transform the bone. So I basically move the uh, virtual bone if this flag is uh, set on. Uh, by getting now the thread safe location that we had set in the original uh, Banny base. So I pull up the thread safe version of what I set there, so these two variables here, run that translation of world space so it sets the offset between the virtual bone and where the gun is, and then I do the rotation the same way, but the rotation had to be done in component space, that's why I ran them as two separate modifications. And then you just finish the chain as you would normally do. So with those two bone adjustments put into that item space, the child, the basically the uh, child for this particular weapon, I can turn on or off the extract left hand position from weapon. So in this case, for this weapon, I have it on. For things like the pistol, I have it off uh, because the pistol actually has native animation. Sorry. So the proper way to do all of this would be to have um, native animation for each and every weapon. So for the pistol, you see that they have all the animations and the virtual bone is in the correct position in all of those animations. For the rifle, same thing, they have the virtual bone in all the right positions. But then for the, short, the shotgun, they didn't do that. They just said, hey, it's good enough to be on the rifle position. So for my case, I needed one where the stem is vertical. And so I overrode both the idle hip animations for male and female, and the blend layers for both of those made those adjustments. And so what you'll end up with, is if I play now, eject out, you'll see that the hand is actually in the proper position, and the wrist is in the proper position. And we can actually take the skeletal mesh, pull that up here, and in real time, if I wanted to move the hand socket, you'll see that the hand will move with it into whatever position I place this. So this allows you to get the hand where you want it, get the wrist direction you want, and you should be good to go. All right, thanks for watching.